Your average Slayer main is a man of focus, commitment, sheer will, something elf players will know very little about. And if you do your research on Slayer, what you're going to find strewn about haphazardly on the internet are lies, falsehoods, untruths about a great man. Some say he serves little use, he needs a rework. He's superseded by other careers, all lies. I am here to tell you that these naysayers are indeed wrong and that the Slayer not only deserves your respect, if not your obedience, but he will make you a better version of yourself. See, the typical Slayer main, he doesn't listen to these things. He doesn't listen to fleeting persuasions of groupthink. He doesn't seek shelter in the shade provided by ranged weaponry. He understands that his success is the fruit of his own competency and his victories are his own. His green circles earned from hard work, from toiling with rusty tools. For when it comes to his failures, which there are few, he does not seek to blame external factors. No, he learns his lessons, he adapts, he sharpens his axe on the grindstone of perseverance. Playing Slayer shows confidence. It shows you are the master of your own destiny and that you seek to bludgeon every rat that stands in your way and you will do so by tyrannical brute force and sheer tyranny of will. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to have a look at the only build you should ever run with Slayer. All other builds are completely redundant. It is the two-handed only build. It is the best build. We're going to bash skulls. We're going to clutch. We're going to get green circles. We even might smoke a few specials along the way. And that's it. Let's get into it. Now, make sure you do watch to the end of the video as I will be showing a photo of my cat. So, something to look forward to, I bet. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, talents, talents. Slayer, let's have a look at him. So, Path of Carnage is in his passives and we've got increased attack speed by 7.5%. Well, it's good. He hits fast. Drengu's Grit, charged attacks cannot be interrupted by damage. Uh, we are going two-handed only, and so we're going to be doing a lot of charged attacks. It is going to work in our favor. Leap, which is his ult. Barton leaps forward to stun a target and gains 30% increased attack speed for 10 seconds. Quite nice, quite nice of an ult. Some people say that it is a useless ult. However, I like it. We're going to build around this ult a little bit further, which is going to enable us to also CC. Uh, we can jump over patrols and you can even get to out of bound areas. If you've ever tried parkouring around the castle, it is quite, quite fun. Then we get to Trophy Hunter, which is hitting an enemy grants a stacking damage buff, increased damage by 10%, stacking three times, buff lasts two seconds. Very nice. Basically what all this means together is, is that we hit fast, we hit hard, we are the Slayer. Okay, so moving on to our level five talent. And of course we're going to go with Doomseeker. That is temp health on hitting multiple enemies in one swing. Uh, both the weapons that we are going to use today hit through multiple enemies. So this is going to enable us to farm massive amounts of temp health in a horde. So Doomseeker, it's an obvious choice. We're going to run this all the way. Level 10, we take Skull Splitter, which is 50% power increase on dual slot two-handed weapons. And that's what we're going to do, so it's an obvious choice. Now, when it comes to these other few talents, what do we got here? We got Hack and Slash, flat 5% crit chance, awful, never ever take this. And then we only have a thousand cuts, which is of course if you are taking a one-handed weapon. Now, if you're taking a one-handed weapon, I assume that it's because you want to use the throwing axe. You know what that means? That is a sign of cowardice, okay? Have some confidence in yourself and pick up the two-handed hammer, okay? Now, moving on, level 15, we go to Smiter. Basically, we take Smiter because, of course, we do. It's a 20% bonus damage to the first hit. It's all you need to know. We take Smiter. Now, level 20 is where people perhaps differ in their opinion on how to play Slayer. And, of course, those people are wrong. Um, you're watching this video. This is the correct way to play Slayer. And the correct way to play Slayer is taking Adrenaline Surge. Adrenaline Surge means that we get our ult back three times faster if we hit max stacks of our passive. Remember the passive, the one that we got for hitting people. We're going to be hitting people very, very Frequently, it's going to enable us to have those max stacks up all the time, especially in a horde. Now, we want to do that because for us, we want to get our ult back as frequently as possible. We're going to be using two-handed weapons and a 30% increase to speed is going to enable us to do insane amounts of DPS. Also, as we will build upon later, we're also going to note that hitting specials we're going to use for our ult is going to be used for one for massive, massive DPS. Two, for hitting and, and taking and dispatching specials. Three, for using for CC. Uh, and four, for just escaping harmful, you know, in 
gnarly situations and for clutching, that sort of thing, okay? In summing up, we want our alt. Our alt's great. We want to use it. We want to spam it. It's going to be the best thing for us. So it is an absolute no-brainer that we take Adrenaline Surge and we're going to use it all the time. We will spam it, spam it, spam it. Uh, when it comes to impatient, uh, it is more useful for a one-handed build. It's not for us. We don't take one-handed. High tally, we don't need it. We already have massive damage. We do not need any more for us. The speed and the CC that we get from the ult is much, much better. Level 25, we get down to Grim Nears Focus. Grim Nears Focus is hitting an enemy with charged attacks, reduces damage taken by 40% for five seconds. Now, we need this, we need it, we take it. It's an absolutely great talent. It is the best on the line by far. Both the weapons that we have being the Great Hammer and the Great Axe, we're going to spam charge attacks into hordes. This means that we're gonna have this up and running all the time, well, when it counts anyway, and 40% is absolutely massive. So with our loadout, it's gonna provide much greater protection than Oblivious to Pain. It's a flat 40%. Which it's from all sources, it's very solid, and we're gonna have it running all the time. All you really need to do is have one charged attack before every encounter, and then sporadically throw them in, which is part of our normal sort of um, you know damage strategy anyway. We're always gonna have 40%. It's very, very useful. Uh, we're building around it, and it is the best one on this line for sure. Um, Barge gets the award for having the best thumbnail ever. Look, I love Barge purely just because of that thumbnail and I've tried to put it and fit it into builds, but unfortunately it sucks. Don't use Barge, even though it has a great thumbnail. Then we get down to the level 30 talent and a cornerstone again of this build. Uh, it is the talent Crunch. Now, Crunch increases the stagger effect we get when I use our ult and it cre increases it by 100%. Now, this is going to be absolutely crucial for survivability as a slayer. After that 100% buff, the stagger that you get from using the ult is very, very good. And because we're able to now spam our ult from taking Adrenaline Surge, we can just spam it on the ground at our feet in front of us to knock back entire hordes and give you and your buddies some breathing room. Now, this is gonna be very, very useful because as we know in this game, putting people on their ass is a very, very useful thing to do. So. We can basically spam it. Uh, we can also use it for specials. Now, people normally take no escape because the reasoning is it's gonna enable you to have more mobility and to be able to get to and avoid damage from specials. Now, this is actually not true. Crunch is a lot better because what it enables you to do is jump to the location of the special and it will then stagger them. If it staggers them, they lose their ability to incapacitate you. There's nothing worse than jumping to a gun rat and he just blasts you in the face. Crunch turns Slayer's talent from something that is a bit of a novelty into something that is highly, highly useful. When we get to our loadout in slot one, we're going to take the Great Hammer uh, and that absolute unit of a weapon and is going to be our bread and butter for this build. We're going to use it to stagger everyone, uh, to clear crowds, bash armored enemies, especially Chaos Warriors. It absolutely chews through Chaos Warriors. And it's also gonna allow us to generate massive amounts of temp health. As we said before, those charged attacks hit multiple enemies. They have a tank modifier, which means it'll cleave even through elite enemies and stagger them. Very, very good weapon. And in the hands of Slayer, it's absolutely mental. Uh, also, of course, we're gonna be spamming those charged attacks to get the 40% damage reduction uh, that we, we spoke about earlier with Grimney's focus. Uh, so that means that we start engagements, we do our heavy attacks in hordes, uh, and that's going to give us our 40% damage reduction. We're going to take the Great Hammer over the Cog Hammer. Now, a lot of people say that the Cog Hammer is a better option. It is most certainly not a better option for this build and for a couple of reasons. One, because we use the charged attacks in hordes most frequently with the Great Hammer, and they're the ones that are going to provide us our 40% damage debuff. Also, uh, the, the lack of damage as opposed to the cog hammer isn't that crucial in the hands of the Slayer as we get the increased damage and the increased attack speed. Each one of those hits is staggers and each one does massive, massive damage. It does not matter. So it is actually the better weapon to use. Another benefit of that is, of course, the Great Hammer and the Great Axe, which are going to be our two loadout weapons, are no DLC required for this build. Combo-wise, in terms of attack combos, very, very simple weapon. As I said, start engagements with a charge and then follow up for single target damage or armored damage with the lights and then for 
cleaning up, cleaning up trash, staggering, that sort of thing. Just use the heavy attacks. For the properties in the trait, we're going to go the standard sort of loadout for a heavy weapon, and that is swift slaying for the trait, attack speed, and block cost reduction. If you don't know, just put this exact combo on any sort of slow swinging weapon, and you're basically that you are good to go. When we get down to slot two, we're going to be running the great axe. Uh, same is going to go there for properties and traits. We're going to go swift slaying, attack speed, block cost reduction. Now, the reason that we use the Great Axe, again, uh, is for horde clearing with charge attacks because, again, we're going to have the charge attacks as our horde clearing, which means that we're going to use it frequently in hordes, which is the time that we're going to take the most damage, and that means that we're going to have a 40% damage debuff applied at all times. Basically, the Great Hammer is our main weapon. The, the Great Axe will be our secondary weapon, and we're going to use it for cleaning up hordes. Uh, so once the horde has been thinned out and we got down to the dregs, we're going to use it to clean up. We're also going to use it to take out unarmored enemies, unarmored bosses, so berserkers, plague rats, and that sort of thing as well. We're going to heavy attack them. That will stagger them. It will light stagger them. Um, but it also, both these weapons, both Great Hammer and Great Axe, actually have very, very good range. And you should be able to hit them from quite a safe distance and apply a light stagger to them. Very, very useful. And as I said, the, uh, light, uh, the heavy attacks rather chain and they enable you to generate a lot of temp health and also keep up our 40% damage buff. Uh, also, if you are just spamming those light attacks with 10% crit, there is a 10% crit chance modifier on the third light attack, which is decent because it can, you know, that's just a little bit extra to get your swift slaying off and just boost your, um, boost your attack speed there. Uh, when it comes to other modifiers, uh, as I said earlier, the Great Hammer has tank modifiers. They're going to cleave, stagger through elites. Uh, it is, it's uh, not heavy linesman, I believe it's just linesman on the Great Axe. So that means that it will cleave, but it's only going to cleave through your lesser enemies. Okay, but that's what we're going to use it for anyway. We're just using it to clean up. It is the mop of murder for cleaning up the dregs once we've done our main damage with the Great Hammer. Now, there is a bit of an argument. I, I mean, I mentioned for the, tr for the trait and the properties about Swift Slaying. Uh, and uh, attack speed. Now, you always run block cost, of course. Uh, however, there is a little bit of an argument there because it is a secondary weapon that you could run parry for some extra protection uh, on the trait, or you could uh, perhaps swap attack speed for stamina. Uh, and you could certainly do that. Uh, but I would say that if you are constantly running out of stamina, you just need to be CCing more with the hammer heavies and with your ult. And uh, I, I wouldn't actually go that. Uh, necklace is same as always. It's pretty standard stuff here. You got your block cost and you got your health and your bark skin. Uh, there is an argument for Boon of Shalia as we can generate big temp health and you are a front liner. Uh, and so, you know, generating temp health, getting a boost to that by 30%, uh, you can run that if you really, really want. But I do believe that Bark Skin is the safer option. I would take that. Uh, for the charm, we're going attack speed and Skaven. We take Skaven for stagger breakpoints on Kata uh, when it comes to the Great Axe, just so it gets those staggers on the monks, uh, for the plague monks and that sort of thing. I haven't done enough testing to see that if you could actually swap this out. It's very hard to test stagger breakpoints without a calculator. Uh, and so don't really know. I think you actually could though swap this out for something else. If you wanted to put chaos or something, I don't think there would be too much of a problem. Um, but yeah, personally, just actually, you know what? I changed my mind. Put Skaven on there. Leave it on there. Don't touch it. Uh, trinket, I go stamina and movement speed. Now, normally the thing to do here would be stamina and crit chance. I go for movement speed over crit chance. Uh, as Slayer, we're not really desperate for crits. I mean, we're running slow slaying. We don't really need it. We're already so fast. Um, the extra movement speed though, we already have a high movement speed uh, and that is going to help us with clutches, make us even more speedy than we already are. Uh, and then when it comes down to the trait, we're going to go Grenadier or Grenadier. Oh, I don't know really how to say it. However, it is the one that gives you a chance to get an extra grenade. We're going to use that. And the reason why is what you want to really do is because we have no range weaponry whatsoever, we're going to keep a grenade and we're going to put one in our back pocket um, for just in case of a rainy day, you might get caught out with a gun rat and fire rat barreling down on you and you might be able to pop that grenade off and then get out of a sticky situation. And so in the case of having an extra grenade, the chance that you can have that extra grenade is very, very useful. Okay, and one more thing, this is gonna be my hot tip for this build and it's also gonna to apply to all your other builds and it is to go into your settings here, right here and turn all this off. 
Now turn this off, these ones here, turn them all off, 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 off. Now this is not going to detract from the game in terms of immersion or anything like that, but it's just going to make your camera not swing around like crazy when you do the heavy attacks for these weapons. And it's going to help you to know and see what's going on, maintain action in the middle of a horde, and it's gonna help you aim your shots immensely. Now that's it. If you've made it this far, I very much appreciate it. Uh, and as promised, here is a photo of my cat. As you can see, he has a broken leg because he's dumb and he tried to attack a car while it was on move in movement. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you would know that we were meant to be giving away a blimp uh, at this video. Um, I'm very, very sorry about that. We had to go with the cat photo instead. Uh, that was a scheduling issue with the blimp people. Don't, don't be disheartened. Stick around. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already because 100% next video, we will be doing a giveaway. It's not going to be a blimp, but we are in talks with people at the moment to secure a set of brake pads for a 2003 Toyota Camry. So very, very excited about that. Uh, tune in for the next video and uh, we'll see and we might get you in a brand new 2003 Toyota Camry with front disc brakes. Absolutely amazing stuff. So see you guys.